Not only does this lens capture beautiful images, I actually think for me, this lens has made me a better photographer. And this is something I generally don't say about gear at all. I really do think it is more about the skill of the user than the lenses or the camera that you're using. But this lens, I actually think has made me a more skillful photographer. This is a nine millimeter F 2.8 ultra wide angle lens. This is a quite unique set of features this lens has because first of all, it's one of the widest non-fisheye lenses that you can buy. Second of all, it has a maximum aperture of f2.8, which means it's not only extremely wide, it's also quite good in low light situations, and it's wonderful for capturing sort of cinematic video. Now, whether that be you're just walking around handheld or put it on a gimbal, you're going to be able to get these sort of very cinematic looking shots, particularly if you use the black boxes or letter box to sort of crop down, and you'll create this kind of anamorphic lens looking effect where you just have this really, really incredible wide angle field of view. It's also a very, very sharp lens. It is an ultra sharp lens and it has very, very low distortion. So there is just the most modest amount of barrel distortion, but unless you're actually putting it in a situation where you're shooting straight lines and going out of your way to look for that barrel distortion, it's just not obvious at all. And in all the video and all the photo that I'll show today in this video, I haven't corrected it at all and I really haven't found it necessary to correct it. And importantly for me and the people that generally watch this channel, it's a very budget priced lens and it's also available on all the popular mirrorless mounts. So I will put links to sort of the different mounts below and you should be able to find the current pricing and availability on this lens depending on which camera system that you're shooting in. The other thing I like about this and compared to some of my other ultra wide angle lenses is this has a standard 67 millimeter filter thread. That means that I can put a standard filter on it or a sort of filter system, a square filter system, and actually use filters for long exposure, particularly for seascape photography, which is something that, that I like to do a lot. Some of my other lenses will not accept a standard filter or a sort of 67 millimeter filter like this. I have to put this sort of crazy contraption on them. And some of them you can't even do that because they won't even have a removable lens hood. So that is a unique thing. Uh, this company also makes filters. So I think they've designed their lenses so that they are compatible with filters, which isn't always the case with ultra wide angle lenses like this. Now, in my use, the places that I really loved it was first of all, for sort of cinematic video, tracking shots, Shots, you really get this incredible sweeping field of view that is completely unique to using a wide angle lens like this. The other thing I found it great for was landscape photography. Now this is quite challenging because you get so much of the scene in, but this is the type of thing that actually makes you a better photographer. So you kind of have to work and make sure that you've got something compelling and interesting in your foreground, middle ground, and sort of off in the distance to create compelling photos with a lens this wide. And that's how I found this lens really, really challenging me to take better photos. And certainly it is the widest lens that I've ever spent this amount of time with. And uh, all the samples you're seeing in the video came from a trip that I made to Tasmania. I brought this lens with me and I thought it would be a great opportunity to test it out. And it certainly was but it wasn't sort of automatic and easy for me. It really did take some time adjusting and sort of figuring out how to use this lens to its best potential. And I did find it worked very, very well in portrait orientation. When you sort of tilt the lens down a little bit and you create or you capture some interesting elements in the foreground, which are actually going to look huge compared to the rest of the image, because a lens this wide is actually going to emphasize the things in the foreground, and it's gonna kind of push away the things in the background. So you really need some either big things or interesting things off in the distance so that they really fill the frame and, and they give some balance to what's in the foreground. But your foreground is really going to be the emphasis. So you need to look for that interesting foreground when you're capturing capturing your images. The other thing this lens is gonna be great for is interiors and architecture, even real estate photography. It's also gonna be great for like cityscapes. If you're traveling in a city like uh, New York City or any of these big sort of European cities, you're gonna be able to go in churches and cathedrals and take beautiful pictures. But also when you're in the streets and you're having these buildings towering over you, you're gonna be 
be able to get photos that kind of sort of capture everything and get everything in the scene where other lenses that aren't quite this wide are really not going to be able to tell the same story as you will with a lens like this. And for a budget lens, probably the thing that I was most impressed about was the build quality. I was honestly shocked by how well built and how nice this lens is. Honestly, I would say that this lens is as well built as you can get. Like I actually don't think you can make a lens any better than this. Like it, it's an ultra smooth aperture ring. It's an ultra smooth focus ring. It has a weather sealing gasket on the bottom, which is like super obvious and sort of quite significant. Like uh, it's probably the most significant weather sealing I've ever seen on a lens. It's an all metal lens. It's got a metal lens mount. It's even got a metal lens hood, which is like something that is, is virtually unheard of nowadays. So everything about this lens just feels like an extremely premium lens. This feels like it was made by Zeiss or a top end Fujifilm lens. I certainly think it's better built than most of the Sony lenses I own, most of the Canon lenses I own, which are all moving towards these sort of plastic housing. This is all metal and absolutely it feels like it's built like a work of art. As I said, I don't think it could be made any better than what it is. All right, I've said so many wonderful things about this lens. Are there any negatives about the lens? Well, there's really one and it's not a problem for me and it's actually something I quite enjoy, but it is generally considered an optical imperfection. And that is this lens has reasonably heavy vignetting at f2.8. Now, as you stop it down is as you get to sort of f9 or f11, which is where I'm going to use it for landscape photography, those corners brighten up and it doesn't become a problem at all. But the one place it might sort of uh, give you a problem is if you're sort of inside a church or a sort of a dark interior architecture, you're going to notice those dark corners. It is quite easy to fix in post, but I would consider it something that we would consider an imperfection. The other thing that I would say is with astrophotography, you are going to get some dark corners as well. So just something to be aware of. Not a huge problem for me or by any means a deal breaker, but it's literally the only thing that I could find that was a negative about this lens. Now, the other thing that some people might find a negative is the fact that it is a manual focus, manual aperture lens. I love to use manual focus, manual aperture lenses, and I particularly love them for sort of wide angle lenses like this. And that is because as a rule, the depth of field you get as you get a wider and wider lens is deeper and deeper. That means that it's can get quite hard to get an out of focus background, which means more and more of the image is in focus. Because of this, you can use focus peaking in your camera or you can use the punch in function when you are focusing to try to make sure what you're shooting is sort of sharp and in detail. But the other thing is this lens on the side of it has some focus markings where it shows if you are, um, trying to focus it and say, oh, I want to focus at something my subject's two meters away. You just set it to two meters away on the side of the lens and that thing two meters away is going to be in focus. And because this is so forgiving, because the wide angle lens has such a deep area of in focus area, if you set it to two meters, actually anything from probably one meter or so all the way out to infinity is generally going to be in focus. So really you just have to be in the roughest possible ballpark and you are still going to have sharp images and images in focus. So if you've never used a manual focus lens before, ultra wide angle lenses are definitely the place to start and you're not really going to have many problems with them. And you know, I would even just set it to say F4, F5.6, F8, set it to about one and a half to two meters and just walk around and shoot video. And when I did that, just everything was in focus. I really had no problems whatsoever. The most challenging thing in photography is image composition. What elements are you going to leave in the scene? Which elements are you going to eliminate from the scene? How are those elements going to relate to each other? Are they going to overlap? Or are you going to create space between them? And how is the light interacting with all of those elements? Now, the wider your lens, the more you have to think about when composing your image. And the more the foreground plays a role in image composition. And because of this, an ultra wide angle lens like this will train your brain to take better photographs. If you're interested in any more information about the lens, I will put those links with pricing and availability in the description down below. It'll cover all the different mounts that it's available for. And I really, really couldn't recommend this lens highly enough. If you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments because honestly, I think this lens is absolutely brilliant.